Welcome back, listeners. Welcome back to Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Rick Trader and Anna Little. If you would like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, please check out our websites, CCRS Network and CCRshow.com. Also, please like us, friend us, and follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. And our next guest is with us, and the honor of the introduction is mine. Matthew Vadum is a senior vice president at Capital Research Center, a conservative think tank in Washington, D.C. Vadum's work has been cited by Fox News, WND.com, Weekly Standard, Wall Street Journal, USA Today, Christian Science Monitor, and many other media outlets. Matthew's an award-winning investigative journalist with a lively, witty writing style, and he's a appeared on many television stations, including Daily Show, CBS Evening News, O'Reilly Factor, Your World, with Neil Cavuto, Laura Ingram Show, the list goes on and on. Matthew Vadum, welcome back to Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Hey, thank you. Well, Good thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. I'm pretty excited about this title you have here, uh, Ocasio-Cortez, quote, Capitalism Won't Always Exist, the Democrats' new folk hero gives a very revealing interview. And this is an article written by you. Looks like it was at Front Page Mag. Tell us, what were you writing about here? Well, it's an interview that the, uh, the new um, uh, wonderkind of the, um, of the left, uh, the new folk hero, Alexandria uh, okay says, um, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Apologies to her if I'm not. Uh, okay says, uh, 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 is uh, Ocasio Cortez? Sure, I had to actually look at it. Um, the, she won the um, primary. She beat Joe Crowley, the number four Democrat in the House of Representatives, and um, she's a member of the Democratic Socialists of America. The, the DSA endorsed her, so she is a socialist, Marxist, small C communist, whatever you want to call her. And she gave an interview where she wouldn't commit to maintaining uh, markets to maintaining, to keeping capitalism as the um, uh, the economic system uh, of the United States. And I thought that was disturbing. So uh, I wrote about it, and um, uh, she's well on her way because she's won uh, 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 the primary in a place where, you know, the Democrat, all, you know, goes on to win uh, invariably the, the general election. She's an incoming uh, congresswoman who will, you know, take off and uh, take office in January, and she's not committed to America's um, largely free market system, and that that ought to scare people. And this kind of thing is taking over the Democrat Party um, at the moment, and uh, people need to know about it. Yeah, you know, she is quite frankly uh, frightening. She she said that capitalism is a fleeting phenomenon, and I guess she said that uh, to. Uh, someone at PBS, um, and, it, and it seems like she thinks that in, in history, capitalism has not always existed and it won't always exist. I don't think that's an accurate description of, of our history. I, I think capitalism has always existed, and I think it always will. But uh, what is your opinion with regard to that, Matthew? Well, I, you know, it's pretty hard to get rid of capitalism. If people have yeah. uh, capitalism... Um, you know, started a long, several hundred years ago, depending upon how you define capitalism. Capitalism, uh, um, uh, you know, market-based economics got a boost once people um, no longer um, were, were starving. <laughs> once subsistence, subsistence farming uh, uh, went away and people were able to produce a surplus that could be traded, um, people uh, had more money, and um, the standard of living overall in the society went up uh, dramatically. This is starting a few hundred years ago. Um, and this is uh, capitalism, uh, even though in its earlier, uh, earliest uh, iterations, it kind of looked more like mercantilism, uh, you know, monopolies. Uh, being enforced by by various um, um, uh, you know national governments against monopolies in other countries, you know it gets kind of weird and and uh, and uh, uh, obscure. But but the point is that as long as people have had the ability to produce surpluses and to trade, there has been capitalism. Um, and what gave people these surpluses that they were able to trade and, and thereby make themselves and society wealthier in the process? Freedom, economic freedom. And this um, uh, uh, soon-to-be congresswoman 
um, has no, uh, you know, didn't, can't, wouldn't commit to being able to continue um, uh, to advocate a government that respects our economic freedoms. And that's, that's worrisome. Well, you know, I'd like to bring in a, into this conversation a, a comparison, perhaps, between this socialist ideal that this um, candidate for Congress is espousing, the way that the American government operates. And, and I, I would like to contrast that in some way, because it seems to me that a government that is by and for the people and directed by the people cannot, by definition, be the kind of socialist government that she's describing. And and if that's true, well, then what does she intend with regard to our form of government? Now, would you like to comment on that at all? Well, I don't know that she, I, I don't know that these um, people, these Democratic Socialists of America people have a firm idea of what they want to replace uh, the current system with. Some want um, you know, and a, a dictatorship of the proletariat, as Karl Marx called it, where everything is run by workers, uh, and others want just, you know, the state, the government, to 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 administer the economy uh, directly and make all economic decisions. So uh, it's kind of hard to pin them down because they don't like to be pinned down on these questions. So I, I'm not sure what she wants, but I know that it's something that most Americans would not like. Okay. They would not like their economic freedoms being taken away. Well, that is where I'm headed with this, because quite frankly, I, I, I can't see Americans throwing away our form of government for anybody. Um, you know, they may be unhappy with the economics of a, of a certain uh, presidential administration. They may be unhappy with the dysfunctional uh, manner in which Congress operates for any temporary period of time. But I do not think that the large majority of Americans think that our form of government is failing in some way. So, Matthew, I, I wonder, um, how far do you think this Democratic Party is going to get if they're espousing socialism in the way that this uh, new uh, or purported uh, Democratic leader, Ocasio-Cortez, would describe it? I mean, I just... I don't know where the Democratic Party. How far will they, they go? I, I don't know it. I don't want to find out. <laughs> no, neither do, neither do I. This is why I'm, so this is why I wrote the article to warn people about Absolutely, this. you did, and thank God that you did. Now, you say that socialists and communists all want government or the collective to be the master. I'm so glad that you put it that way because that's exactly what socialism does. It creates a master servant or master slave relationship between the government and the people it's a really bad concept and, and yeah well as, as David American, Horowitz I, said to me years ago don't 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 assume that these people have thought all this stuff through carefully because <laughs> yeah. and he's a former communist himself or self-described Marxist so they, they don't necessarily know what they want they know that they hate the current system they hate America what it stands for and they want to they want to um, overthrow the current system well, I'd love to tell them that, you know, if they hate America that much, there are other countries they could live in. That's what I would like to say. Well, yeah. <laughs> we're happy with what we have here. But, you know, you talk right. also about the difference between um, socialists and communists, whether they're really looking for revolutionary action or not, and that there's a difference between them. So why don't you help us with that a little bit? Well, Karl Marx said socialism was a way station. It was a temporary... Um, um, uh, a state of being uh, on the way to true communism. Socialism is like collective government ownership of of the uh, the means of production and of um, all the the economic entities, all uh, you know, all the productive entities uh, in society. Um, communism is you know co is sitting around the campfire kumbaya. That's where everybody just loves each other, and uh, there's no reason for a government. It's basically it's a commune. It's like a kibbutz uh, in Israel, uh, and uh, there's no enforcement mechanisms, and you just have to trust everybody um, uh, to respect your rights and just and just hope that they do. And it's not a very productive. Um, system. It doesn't protect people's rights. It goes against human nature. Human nature, people are selfish. And you have to do certain things in order to stay alive, in order to, you know, in order to exist. So, um, 
uh, you know, this is this is what uh, this is what communism is. Socialism simil- similarly uh, takes away the incentive for people to uh, to be productive. Uh, what was it Marx saying? That's become a cliche nowadays. To each to each according to his ability. Uh, from each according to his ability to each according to his needs. So you work as hard as you possibly can, and other people get to enjoy the fruits of your labor, um, uh, whether they work or not. And this is not this is not a sustainable system. It doesn't it doesn't work. It's not a good idea. Well, you does know, that I answer your question. It I know it's, it, these things question. are hard to explain. Well, no, I think you're doing a great job of explaining it, and and quite frankly, you're making me think of the country of Greece where we saw uh, a situation in which the government just became the largest employer and then wasn't able to pay its bills and therefore wasn't able to continue at that level of employing everybody and people were demanding you know benefits and whatnot from the government and then the go- the government it just imploded and and it seems to me that that should have been a lesson and uh, unlike um, I guess those of us who see it that way, um, these folks are still thinking that they can get elected saying they're going to hand people free stuff. And, and apparently in this particular primary, Democrats in a majority in that district believed her. So we've well, got yeah, a problem. They, they do. They're, they're fed. They want to do crazy things like abolish ICE. The, the Immigration and Customs uh, Enforcement Agency, they think that borders are racist. Which yeah, is well, got to be, which is probably one of their craziest ideas. That the fact that we're a nation, and that we try to act like it, um, uh, means that we're that we're you know that we're bad people, that we're racist, and this is just this is just insane. I and agree. And this is the kind of thing that these uh, people support. They just want to overthrow the the system. Well, I agree with you, Matthew, and you've just transitioned beautifully to the next set of questions we're going to go through with you. But I do have to take a quick break. I hope that you'll hold on so that we can continue on the other side of this break. Listeners, we are coming to you from the Conservative Commandos Radio Network studios and around the world on the Internet with TalkStream Live, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, American Political Radio, Leading Edge Radio Network, and AM FM 24-7. I'm Anna Little, co-hosting today with producer Rick Trader, who's in the studios. We are speaking this segment with Matthew Vadim, Senior Vice President at Capital Research Center. We'll be right back with you after this break. This is J.D. Manier, co-host on the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Are you among the millions of Americans who feel uncertain when it comes to their health care? We're happy to inform you that there is a solution. And that solution is Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of like-minded people that work together to pay for their medical costs. There are no networks, so you get to choose your doctor and hospital. Liberty HealthShare allows you to easily decide how, when, and where you will access health care. It could be the best practical, moral, and economical choice for you and your family. Starting at $107 a month for a single, up to $449 a month for a family, that's mom, dad, and all kids. This is the way health care should be. For more information, call 855-585-4237 or visit libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org and regain control over your health care costs. Together, we're changing health care for good. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Anna Little and yours truly, Rick Trader. And for rebroadcasts of our shows, please check out our websites, ccrshow.com or CCRS Network. Please like us, friend us, and follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. Our guest this segment is Matthew Vadim. He is the Senior Vice President at Capital Research Center. And we're talking about Casio Cortez. Capitalism won't always exist. The Democrats' new folk hero gives a very revealing interview. Matthew, thank you for holding through with that break. We do appreciate your time. Right, right. We're happy to be here again. Matthew, DNC chairman Tom Perez has hailed her as, quote, the future of our party. Uh, do you think if this is the future of the Democrat Party, that that party is actually in deep trouble? 
Well, I, I think it is the future of the Democratic Party. In fact, it's already, it's actually the present of the Democratic Party because most of the members of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, which is 70 or 80 or so uh, members of the U.S. House of Representatives, are already members of the Democratic Socialists of America organization, the same one that Alexandria, soon to be Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, uh, belongs to. So this, this is what these people already stand for. The difference now is that um, the, the, the louder activists who aren't part of the party machinery, who aren't part of the party establishment, are coming forward and, and defeating uh, incumbents like Joe Crowley, uh, who was con the congressman Joe Crowley, who is the number four uh, 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 ranking Democrat, uh, among House de uh, Democrats in the U.S. House of Representatives. She took him out a month ago, and uh, this is a sign of things to come. Now, he was already a big lefty, but he wasn't um, motivated to be as hardcore. Uh, I'm thinking that he, his beliefs are probably not that different from uh, soon-to-be Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, but um, he's less motivated, and you know he, he doesn't have to press as hard to achieve them. Uh, now people are getting elected, people are getting uh, winning nominations for the Democratic Party who are motivated to make their crazy uh, ideas happen. Crazy ideas like abolishing, uh, like getting rid of ICE, so that there's no immigration police at all, nobody to enforce um, uh, these matters at our borders. Uh, they want to have a $15 an hour or more minimum wage. They want Medicare for all. They want all sorts of other crazy ideas uh, to be implemented. And, um, uh, you know, that's, that's what these people want. And uh, 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 they're going to, not only are they wrong, they're misguided, but they're going to bankrupt the United States. But they're fine with that because it's all in pursuit of their abstract social justice ideals. So, so they're okay with ruining America in order to change it into something um, they're more comfortable with. Well, you know, Matthew Vadim, apparently at least her district is fine by this. She won by a 57% to 42%. An incumbent congressman, as you said, uh, Joe Crowley was like uh, the fourth in line in the Democrat uh, line. In, in the House of Representatives, so at least the people in her district surely are buying into what she's saying. Yeah, they are. They are. But, you know, that's one of those places where it's, it's that old expression, you know, they elect a dog uh, 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 as congressman as long as he's a Democrat. Um, so, you know, it's in uh, Brooklyn and Queens, I believe, so uh, or the Queens of the Bronx. So they, they're going to vote Democrat no matter who's running. Um, uh, but the point is that the, all the, the radical lefties have, uh, have all the seized, have seized all the excitement. They have the um, at least emotional momentum right now, and they are, um, uh, you know, experiencing a lot of a lot of success in in uh, primary elections right now. And uh, so they're they're muscling out the the old guard, who are ideologically not that different, but but. The, the old guard is, you know, like people like Nancy Pelosi are, you know, there are limitations on what they feel that they can do. They're not, um, they're not going to push as hard to put all of their radical ideas in because, you know, because they, they are responsible to existing, uh, to existing, um, you know, constituency groups and so on. And, um, you know, they're not, they don't have a free hand. Um, whereas these new people have a free hand to do whatever they want. Um, and and to be as radical and to be as damaging to the status quo as they as they feel is necessary. Matthew Vadim, what else can you tell us about this this DSA, this small C communist group? Well, they reportedly have forty five thousand members, and a lot of them are academics, and uh, you know, like Francis Fox Piven, um, the the Marxist uh, academic and activist. Um, responsible for the Cloward Piven strategy in the 60s to bankrupt uh, state and local governments in order to bring about a collapse of, of um, the government leading into, you know, a, a much bigger government control over everything. Um, and it is one of these groups that you've never heard of, but that is very important in um, among um, uh, the Democratic Party's um, 
uh, uh, far left wing. They're they're influential. They they throw their weight around, and when they when they say you know when they say things, things get done. You know things their 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 wishes are obeyed. I, for one, I would love to ask her if socialism is so great, why hasn't it worked in places like Cuba or Venezuela? You know, Venezuela, back in the 1960s, was like the third uh, largest economy in the Western world behind the United States and Canada. But besides that, Matthew, there are a couple other leftist socialists running out in California on the West Coast, and recently they attended a fundraiser which was headlined by Nancy Pelosi, and during that fundraiser, these candidates refused to say that they would vote for Nancy Pelosi as Speaker of the House. Uh, I think that not only Joe Crowley, but the rest of the Democrat leadership has a lot to worry about, don't you? Definitely. Definitely. They're being threatened uh, on their left flank by these people. And uh, these people don't have any any respect for them. They want to they want to push them out. Now I'm not going to take a position on whether Nancy Pelosi should be pushed out. Uh, uh, I think it's good for Republicans <laughs> that she stay in place. But um, you know I'm not in charge of what happens in the Democratic Party. Uh, uh, they they want to get rid of everybody everybody you know who's old line and uh, and who accepts um, certain. Um, the, you know the pieties uh, of the left that that have been enforced for the last few decades. Now, the the emerging insurgent left is is uh, is crazy left, and they want they want to they want to do really really radical things. And um, um, they're going to alienate. They're going to uh, excite their hardcore supporters, I suppose. The uh, the base of the um, of the Democratic Party, but they're not. I think they're going to have trouble outside of. Um, the places where they're strong at getting new uh, new recruits and getting new new voters, um, you know, moderate voters to support them. Uh, people aren't going to want to vote for a crazy anti-American party. Matthew Vaden, what does this say in your way of thinking? What does this say for the this blue wave, this Democrat blue wave that's supposed to come through in in 2018? Uh, well, I don't know if it's going to happen. I know traditionally the party that controls the White House um, uh, takes a drubbing usually in uh, in off-year congressional elections like we're about to have in November. Uh, but uh, every once in a while they don't. Um, and and right now the, the Democrats are behaving so irresponsibly, so radically, um, and they're turning people off. The question is, is that going to be enough to help Republicans keep um, control of Congress in the Senate? There's a, a lot of Democrats uh, are in a really weak position. A lot of the Democrats up for re-election in the Senate in 2018 are in uh, uh, red states that Trump uh, won in some cases really, really easily. Um, and uh, uh, the House, where there's a margin of what a couple of dozen. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't cover. The, the, the exact details of the, the horse race really, really closely. But um, I know that the, the Republicans have a healthy margin in the House, but it could easily be wiped out, um, you know, if things, if a few percentage points uh, turn against them. So, you know, you could have a situation whereby the Republicans' um, uh, control of the House is, uh, is uh, weakened, but they're still in control. I don't, I don't Matthew know. Vader. I, I don't know. Yeah. Matthew Vader, yeah. Senior Vice President at the Capital Research Center. We want to thank you for joining us here on the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Please tell our audience how they could follow your work. Uh, well, here at capitalresearch.org. Uh, capitalresearch.org, that's where I work, Senior Vice President. Uh, I'm also, I have a website, personal website, Matthew Vadum, V A D U M, dot com, where you can view. Uh, my works, and I'm also a pretty regular contributor to um, to FrontPageMag.com, which is where you saw the article that that inspired this interview about uh, uh, soon-to-be Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. That's FrontPageMag.com. Matthew Vadim, again, thank you for joining us. Take care and God bless. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye.